kombolewa kombolewa na yesu na yesu nimesamehewa 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 na yesu na yesu nimesamehewa Praise God, church. Amen. Praise God again. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I request that we may rise to our feet as we begin our service this morning. We thank God for this day. He has allowed us to come into his presence and to pour our hearts to him. A day that he has made and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Can we just worship him? Tell him something this morning. How great he is, how awesome, how wonderful he is, how amazing he is. Were it not for his mercy, where would we be? We attribute to him all our worship, all our praise, all our adoration. Hands up, hearts open, wide as the sky, we lift you high, we lift you high, hands up, hearts open, wide as we cry, God we Oh! 
taken his place in our lives this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
Yeah. 
without the BGVs. Hosanna! Without the BGVs, I want to hear the congregation singing. Ha. So let a king be lifted. Hosanna. You can join in and sing. Hosanna. Hosanna. This morning, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hosanna, 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 in the highest. You are our King. Check 
Father, we bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name, oh God. Where could we be without your grace, oh God? Where could we be without your mercies, oh Jehovah? Thank you for your power. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your favor upon our lives, oh God. We are standing here by your grace, oh God. We are standing here by your mercies, oh Jehovah. Father, we worship you, oh God. Father, we adore you, oh Jehovah God. We lift up the name that's above every other name. At the mention of this name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords, oh God. So we bow, oh God. We bow to worship you, oh God. We bow to honor you, oh Jehovah. What is man that you are mindful of? We are like grass today, we are here. And tomorrow we are gone. What an opportunity to bless your name, oh God. What an opportunity to honor you, oh Jehovah. What an opportunity to lift our voice in adoration, oh God. To lift our voices, oh God, in praise, oh Jehovah. Shakarabo sin terebaba. Renterebo zianterabakonto. Let the city know that there is a lion of Judah and the great I am, O oh God. Let the world know that we serve a living God who does not change, O oh Jehovah. We bless you, O oh God. You do not gather your people in vain. Child of God, I remind us this afternoon, even from the revival week, we were reminded that dead things can receive life with the power of God. Our work is to believe in Him and to prophesy and to connect to this spirit and to connect to this power. I don't know what has brought you in the house of the Lord this afternoon. But we remind you that every dead situation must bow. We remind you that every dead situation must bow. Go ahead and start prophesying over your life. Prophesy over your family in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Riba sheke reba yanta. Rebo si ante reba konto robo zeka. Contend for your life in Jesus name. Submit that request to the Lord. Submit that request to the Lord. What is too hard for the Lord? There is nothing that's impossible with him. He is the way maker. He is the great I am. He is the mighty one of Israel. He is the dead destiny changer. Come on, connect with your Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless you, oh God. We worship you. We speak to every dead situation. We speak to every possible situation. My Father, we declare life and life in abundance, oh God. Life in those families in Jesus' name. Life in those businesses in Jesus' name. Life in that marriage in the name of of Jesus. Life in those children in the name of Jesus. We declare life and life in abundance. Holy Spirit of God move in our life. Holy Spirit of God take control. Holy Spirit of God change our situation. Change our circumstances right now. Let every sickness oh God. Let every disease bow in the presence of the Lord. Father, we honor you and we bless you, oh God. Indeed, you do not gather your people in vain. We speak to every circumstance. We speak to every issue, my God. What almighty God, almighty, what is too hard for you? There is nothing that's impossible with you. In this sanctuary, there are desperate hearts, oh God. Oh God, yearning for your move in their lives. Yearning for your move in their families. Yearning for your move, oh God, in their businesses, in their workplaces, my Father. Do it for your children, oh God. Do it for your children, we pray. Do it, oh God, this afternoon, my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Some trust in chariots. Others trust in horses. But we shall trust in the name of the Lord. The 
the name that's above every other name, at the mention of this name, everything bows to him. On earth, under the earth, in heaven, everything bows. We put our trust in you. Father, we put our trust in you, God. Trust him. Trust him with that process in Jesus' name. Trust him with that family in the name of Jesus. Pour your heart to him and just trust him in Jesus' name. Why don't you just tell Lord God tonight, this afternoon, I trust in you. I trust in you, God. The strong tower, the rushers run to you and they are safe. We run to you, O oh God, this afternoon, O oh God. For we know the burdens are lifted at Calvary. Every burden, whatever the name, this afternoon is being lifted in the name of Jesus. This afternoon, O oh God, is bowing in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you. Lord, we give you praise. We worship your God. We give you thanks, O Jehovah. the King of Kings. Appreciate the Lord of Lords in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you for the peace of the Lord. Just go ahead and thank God for the peace that surpasses all human understanding in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You know, child of God, we only have one person that gives us the peace that surpasses all, all human understanding. Receive the peace of the Lord over your life, over your family, it doesn't matter. Over your business, where you are working, it doesn't matter. Receive the peace of the Lord. Receive the peace of the Lord. Receive the peace of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we receive your peace. We receive your peace. It doesn't matter the circumstance. It doesn't matter the issues. Oh, the peace of the Lord 
that surpasses all human understanding is our portion. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. I appreciate the Lord once again. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Hallelujah. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Congregation, in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Good. You may go ahead and take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Thank you so much for coming to the church where Christ is the answer. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Amen. And let's appreciate this lovely team. Our ladies and gentlemen, thank you for leading us so powerfully in the presence of the Lord. It's nice to be in the house of the Lord again. Uh, the Bible says, the psalmist said, I was happy when I was told, let us go to the house of the Lord. You know, your life can't remain the same in the presence of the Lord. Something must change. Something must align itself to the will and to the purposes of the Lord. So as you sit in the presence of the Lord, remind yourself, you have to talk to yourself. My life will never remain the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me also appreciate those who are fellowshipping with us for their very first time. Today we are full house and thank you for coming. Continue bringing your relatives, your friends and your neighbors uh, here at Sitam Valley Road. Anyone fellowshipping with us for their very first time upstairs? Did you come with visitors? Anyone from upstairs? Upstairs? Oh, I'm scanning around. You know, we say it in first service. If we didn't come with visitors, we will all take the tea that the pastoral team prepared for visitors. Yeah, I know some of you say, hey, amen, today we are going to take tea after the service. Downstairs, did you come with the visitors? Oh, yeah. Oh, my. Thank you so much. Would you want to stand? We appreciate you. This side. Oh, thank you, lady. Wow. Downstairs, you are the best. Even upstairs, you are always the best. Thank you. Thank you for coming to fellowship with us. Oh, there were many. Wow. Thank you very much. After the service, we'd want to have a cup of tea with you. Kindly, the ladies and gents in blue jackets will be able to guide you. We want to tell you, if you are looking for a church to worship, that you are such has come to an end. But if you are just passing by, kindly take our warm greetings to your home church. Amen. And today we also have our presiding bishop. Thank you so much, bishop, for choosing to fellowship with us. We honor you and we appreciate you. Amen. Amen. Uh, some of you missed half of your life the last week. How many of us came for the revival week? Oh, good. Wow. Clap for yourself. Amen. Thank you so much. Those who didn't come, you missed. You missed a lot. I encourage us to go to our YouTube channels, channels and take a day off and just lock in with the Lord. There is a revival. There is a shift in the spiritual realm and you don't want to miss. It's also happening here at Sitam Valley Road. Amen. Good. So we want to give our tithe and offering and allow me to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we are so grateful for your goodness and your faithfulness in our lives, oh God. We thank you that you bless us exceedingly abundantly above all that our mind could ever think or ever imagine. And for the ones that you have given to us, oh God, as we bring to your house, may you bless each and every giver. And even the ones that do not have anything to give, Lord, we thank you because you shall provide for them. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Amen. Ashes kindly wait on us and um, before the media team brings the announcement, uh, we will be graduating Friends of Jesus Season 8. Let's appreciate our boys and girls. Amen. For those who don't know Friends of Jesus, this is a program here at Sitam Valley Road Children Ministry. We intentionally disciple our children. We are in season eight, so we've done this for the last uh, five years, and we thank God. This is where we ask parents to give us their children who have given their lives to Jesus, and we take them through a program for two months. And by the way, let me just appreciate my teachers, led by our teacher Sharon Litunia. Do you want to stand and wave to the congregation? She's the one that guides us in this aspect of our discipleship to the children. So we've been with them for like two months. We teach them the Holy Spirit, prayer, the local church, how to serve, journey of salvation. We teach them so many things. And God is good. 
because their lives have never remained the same to them that trust in him. So our children will be presenting after the announcement. So um, media team kindly roll out the announcement. Amen. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer for the world today, today, today. Jesus is the answer, Jesus is the answer for the world today, today, today. Above him there is no other, above him there is no other, above him there is no other, Jesus is the way. Sitam Valley Road, where Christ is the answer. Good Sunday to you wherever you are. A very warm welcome to our fellowship today, the 15th of May 2022. It is a great honor to have you worship with us. We appreciate your support towards God's work through your tithes and offerings here in Valley Road. To worship through giving, use the basket next to you in the aisle. You can also use our Impesa Pay Bill number 933-939 and in the account, indicate whether it is a tithe or an offering. If you wish to draw a check, please do so in favor of Christ is the Answer Ministries. You can also visit our office reception to swipe your card at the end of this service god bless you as you give thank you the women ministry will be having their monthly meeting on saturday 21st may 2022 at 9 a.m here at sitam valley road the speaker will be sister amy rubadiri on the topic inside out beauty are you a member of Sitam Valley Road? Do you possess the following skills? Sound engineering, videography, photography, graphic and motion design, website and social media management, script writing and voiceover, lighting, screen projection and presentation, electronics repair and maintenance, to volunteer in our media ministry, kindly visit the sound booth at the end of the service. We announced the bonds of marriage between Godfrey Ingutia Obadia and Martha Kabalika Amurega on 28th May 2022 at 12 noon at Sitam Valley Road. If anyone has a valid reason why these persons should not be lawfully wedded, kindly inform the church office in writing at least seven days before the wedding date or forever hold your peace. In case you need to communicate with us, please do so using any of the contacts below. Have a blessed week. Thank you. of you we have the friends of jesus season yeah. friends of jesus season yeah. in the first friends of jesus lesson we learned about assurance of salvation and how jesus died on the cross for our sins and in the last lesson we learned about the holy spirit is our helper thank you praise the lord church praise the lord again my name is Prince Ariel, and I want to tell you a little bit of how I got born again. It was 2020 before Corona started. It was on a Sunday. When we were finishing the lesson, the teacher asked who would like to get born again. And then I went forward, I was prayed for, and I felt a really strong feeling from heaven coming inside my body. And when it reached at night, my parents asked me what I learned. And I told them everything. Even they were amazed. Even myself I was amazed. Thank you and have a blessed day. Keep his 
not sin against you. John chapter 14 verse 7. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. is common to mankind, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, verse 2, receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. John chapter 14, verse 15 to 31. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know me, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as servants, I will come to you. Before long, the world will not accept him anymore, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, say, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us? and not to the world, Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teachings. My Father will love them, and will come to them, and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I give with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Let me say, I am going away, and I am coming back to you. If you love me, you will be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I told you now, before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. I will not say much more to you, for the Prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he comes so that the world may learn that I love my Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded me. I pledge allegiance to the Lamb with all my strength, with all I am, I will seek to honor. and sing with us. With all my strength, with all I am, I will seek to honor his command. I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. With all my strength, with all I am, I 
Appreciate them once again, boys and girls. Remain there. Wow, wow, wow! Lovely boys and girls, servants of the Most High. These are the ones, servants of the Most High. Wherever they will go, they will radiate His glory. Amen. At this moment, we want to pray for them, and I'll be inviting our senior pastor to commission them, uh, introduce the speaker to us, and bring up the worship team. Welcome, senior pastor. Thank you. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's not sit. We have been asked to stand, and we better obey. There is hope for the church. We want to appreciate the children. Children, we appreciate you. We appreciate each one of you. I am sure you can sense that they are not saying it. They mean it in their hearts. There is a transformation you can sense. And we want to pray that God will keep that which he has put all the days of your lives and that you will make maximum impact in the kingdom of God in your generation. We also want to appreciate the, pa the, the, the parents of these children. They have been dropping them here on Saturdays early in the morning just to learn the word of God. Parents, the Lord bless you for obeying the Lord in this matter. I really want to ask that parents you help them keep these Bibles for many, many, many years. Are we together, parents? I hope these are their Bibles. Yes? Keep your Bible very well and read it. So that when you're in primary, I mean, when you're in high school, when you're in the university, and when you grow up, you can still have your what? Your Bible. Amen. The Lord bless you. We want to make a prayer. I want to ask you, each one of you, you'd want to make a prayer for these children, that God will sustain them, that God will uphold them, that God will protect them in the name of Jesus. Let's pray for these children. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh, we are amazed at what you have done in transforming the life of these little ones. Lord, we are excited, oh God, and we want to tell you thank you for snatching these ones from the works of the enemy. We tell you thank you, Lord, for singling each one of them out for your purposes in their generation. Thank you, Jesus, for revealing yourself to each one of them by your Holy Spirit. Lord, I want to pray in the name of Jesus that these children, the word that they have received, oh God, the salvation they have received, like you have said, sustained men of us who got saved when we were young that you sustain each one of these in the faith in the name of jesus lord may you protect them from many vices that destroy the youth of today lord i pray that you will protect each one of them from all the tricks and the plans of the enemy in the name of jesus lord we want to pray like samuel's of old like prophet jeremiah of old like king david of old that you will speak to them continue to speak to them where they are young. Lord, may they hear your voice. Lord, may your calling be upon each one of them to do your bidding in their generation to the glory of your name. Lord, we commit them to you. We pray that, Father, they will hide that word in their hearts all the days of their lives. That the desire for your word, the desire for Before their relatives, I pray, oh God, single them out for anointing and favor that it comes from above. In their education, we pray for a straight path in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we pray that you will also provide for their every need. 
May you give their parents wisdom and resources to be able to meet every need of these children according to your riches in glory. So, Lord, we commit them to you now. Lord, we surrender them to you now. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 We also want to say thank you to Pastor Lucy. We have appreciated Pastor Lucy for this kind of ideas. And once again, we want to appreciate the, 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 the teachers. The teachers. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. This is amazing. This is amazing. I'm sure parents, you will be bringing your little ones to friends of Jesus. Please bring them in the next season. The next season, yes. The next season. Uh, and, next and the, season we'll announce. Yeah, we'll announce. Thank you. When you hear it announced, please make sure they come. Amen? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. This is beautiful. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. You can have your seats in the presence of the Lord as we ask the children. Hey, there are very small ones here and they get everything. Me, I don't understand these things. Teachers, the Lord bless you. <laughs> the Lord bless you. Thank you. Before the worship team brings us a special, uh, the speaker today is our brother, Elder John Nganga. <clears throat> this month, we are dealing with radiating God's glory in, through leadership and, and the politics. Began it last Sunday. And uh, we are trusting God that he is going to help all of us to play our part in, in, in this nation at this time. John Nganga, Elder John Nganga, is known to all of us. And it's long since we invited him to speak. And we are glad that he was able to find the time to come. And not only so, that he came with Mrs. Nganga, Dr. Rebecca, is here with him, which is a great, great blessing. We saw them a long time ago. But we thank God they are here today. Amen. Amen. We all know Helda, isn't it? But I came to know him in 1983 in high school. When he came to speak to us, they came to speak to us with their little children then in those high school camps. You remember those ones? Those who got saved those days, they were special. Those camps were special. You remember the powerhouse. And, and the speakers from Nairobi. You know. <laughs> Some of you who grew in Nairobi may not understand this, but God speaks to people in very different ways. It is like yesterday in a camp that they came to speak to us, and I still remember the sermon from the book of Matthew, chapter 24. Amen. And so before he comes, we will pray. The worship team will give us some music to the Lord and then our Helder will come to speak to us. Amen? Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we want to say thank you, for this is indeed the day that you have made. And we know that you don't gather your people for nothing. You have a purpose today in this service. Lord, I ask you that you may speak to each one of us. May your purposes for today be fulfilled in all our hearts. Because you are a faithful. We want to lift our elder before you, our elder Nganga Lord. May you anoint him for this moment. Thank you for speaking to us in the first service through him. Lord, may you do it again. So we rest in your hands, knowing that you are about to do something in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We want to appreciate our bishop once again for coming to fellowship with us. He is a member of this church. He fellowships here. But it's good to have him around with us. Amen? Amen. And he's so relaxed. Pastors envy, envy you that you can come to church so relaxed. We will copy that. The, the Lord bless you. Praise the Lord, church. Um, the song we're about to do is called Mercy. Um, we are here by the mercies of God. Perhaps there is a decision you've made. Perhaps there's something you've done that you regret. You're even surprised that you're alive today considering what you've been through. In the book of Jonah, 
chapter 4, verse 2. Jonah was explaining to God why he was upset that he had initially gone to Tarshish because he said this, for I knew that you are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. I'd like to encourage anyone who today is feeling they have really messed up. The mercy of God is available for you today. Take hold of his mercy. I'm living proof of what the mercy of God can do. If you knew me then, you'd believe me now. He turned my whole life upside down, took the old and he made it new. That's just what the mercy of God can do. Now I'm alive to tell the story how I've overcome. It's His goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. And I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done. The goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. Oh, the power of His blood. Mm -hmm. I thought I The choices made that I regret, oh, I would still be lost, oh, but for the mercy of God, I am alive to tell the story, how I've overcome, it is the goodness, the Based on what I've done, but on His goodness 
Bwana asifiwe. Isn't that a story in song? Or a testimony in song? May they write many more like that. Where you do not have to ask, what are you saying? It's not complicated poetry. It's simply a testimony. What a fantastic thing. Like, uh, I want to thank God for this. Wherever I go, I keep telling them, my home church is very rude. And uh, so I'm home. And um, like I was telling the first service, the first time I appeared in church, I just calculated today, I had not thought about it, was 1972. So I'm 50 years coming to church. The only, the only thing is that I didn't become a member for, for the next number of years. I, I, I went off on and on until years later when I became a member. I've also just remembered that the first time I was invited to speak was 1991, just over 30 years ago. And just for the encouragement of the men's fellowship, it was the men's fellowship that had a breakfast for men at Abaseda Hotel. Does it still exist? <laughs> yeah, it was a high class hotel. To be invited to Abaseda was a big thing. And so I remember speaking of the topic the men had given me. And actually, people, the men, they had come with non Christians. Something I would encourage men to do. And so some. Uh, some non-Christians non got saved. One of them is our deputy vice chancellor at Park, who got saved that morning. When we, when, when we moved out of the, of, after the service, Pastor White came to me and said, can you repeat that same message, word for word, tomorrow? <laughs> so I wasn't given any notice, and I wasn't going to tell the pastor no. So that's how I ended up preaching the following day, I think he was a preacher, so he just removed himself, and I spoke the following day here in church. I think those days, there were three services. I can't remember. So I've had many opportunities after that to discuss. We are here to discuss the issue of Christian and politics, the place of believer in politics. And... Um, I think it's a very important topic, not just because of the timing, but because I believe there's a lot of misinformation among believers. And that's what we want to cover. The first part I covered in, in the first service, and because it's recorded, I will ask you to go to YouTube. That's why it's placed on YouTube, so that I don't repeat myself. Now, tell, remind the people in the first service that they don't know what I preach in the second one. So they also must go to... Isn't that fair? That's fair. So if you want to have the introduction, you go there, I'll go on from there. I'm asking my wife, my girlfriend from the 1970s, <laughs> to, to just come and read the Bible to her students. She is Dr. Rebecca Nganga, but to me, she is still Becky. Uh, so let's allow her to read God's word for us. Yes, Rebecca Nanga is my name, and Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Let me tell you, it's exciting to be in church. And uh, when it says our church, uh, for me, the second service, this one is the, my service, and I sit somewhere there. But I've not been there since Corona. Uh, so uh, I was shocked today to see the number of cars, and also to see you. Let me tell you why it's so exciting to, to be here, and uh, to... Okay, when I was preaching last Sunday, I told them, you know, it's so, I'm so grateful to God to be a Kenyan. Uh, so I thank God for making me, I mean, for making me be born in Kenya. I am also grateful for you for wherever you are born. I can't be proud for you. I can only be proud of myself. Yeah, so I mean, I'm grateful to God. One time, my husband and I uh, took some time off and we went to another African country. We were in the capital city there. And uh, we, we, we met a brother, a Kenyan brother, who was living there. And uh, it, it was a Saturday, or rather, the Sunday found us there. Do you know, that brother, what he shared with us, makes me grateful for being where we are and for the grace of God. He told us that a time came in that country where in the church, people 
uh, speaking immorality as normal. You know whom haven't I slept with? Da, 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 da. I mean, people are simply sinners, mockers, and scoffers, and singing praise to God. That kind of a mixture where you wonder, what is this? That brother told us one morning, because he was in the leadership of the church, and looked for, is there anyone? Is, are there people who know God for who he is? Not entertainment. He told us one morning he woke up and asked himself whether it was responsible to take his children in that kind of thing. That because when I'm seeing children memorizing scripture here, that's why I'm saying, do you realize what it is God is doing for us? Do you, so, I mean, the children there, he woke up and decided he is a priest. He actually came up with a program with his wife and his three children. They had a service. Because he said it's not responsible to expose yourself to trash on a Sunday morning. He could not find a place to worship. So with him, by the grace of God, somebody sent someone to start a church there. And that time we were able to go to a church where Christ is worshipped and honored. He took us to another church. Do you know, in the middle, we said, what are we doing here, by the way? I mean, we just walked out. I mean, just wonder, what are we? Friends, do you know what it is to be where Christ is honored and God is revered as he should? That's what I'm saying. Let's praise the living God for this great privilege and opportunity. And even for you who are visitors, praise the Lord because he's, he's our God. And let's allow him be God to us. My husband asked me to read uh, the Bible. <laughs> and I know the pain when you are a preacher and someone is taking your time. It feels very bad. Um, uh, as I read the scripture, and the one in particular he has asked me to read, which is Romans chapter 13. One time I was coming from a camp. I mean, growing older means having stories. <laughs> I was coming from a camp. I was taking a brother. We were with in the camp uh, to, to Masako Bastage, if you know. And I don't know whether it still exists. So I was taking him there. When we reached there near Marigiti there, okay, I know the terms I'm using may need explanation. The, the lights, which again was a new thing for us, they became, they moved from green to what I had later is called amber. Uh, so I had heard when it is that way, you either go or you stop. So I went. And uh, then I found literally seven policemen. They were smiling because like, I have put them myself into their hands. And they were there, they asked me for lunch because I had done wrong. So I told them, by the way, even if I was to, I cannot give you money. I can't bribe. I'm born again. I'm a Christian. I said, but you jumped right. I said, yeah, I'm sorry. I thought it was still within the, the, the time required. So I was asked, okay, if you are insisting you are born again, what does Romans chapter 13 say? Oh, uh, first one. <laughs> so you know, authority is given by God. Ah, uh, so they said, yeah, uh, this one is serious. Let her go. I was really, by, by, I was asked the second question whether I thought the crown he was having was given by God. I said, yes, sir. So I was told, yeah, this one is, um, is born again. I was released. So I was so grateful to God that I knew what Romans chapter 13 says. And that's why I could say it. So, <laughs> I, I was asked to read uh, 13 verse 1 to 7. I asked my husband, please let me read the whole chapter. Because Colossians 3 verse 16 says, let the word of God dwell in you richly. Uh, so that you don't go quoting uh, motivational speakers. So that you know the word of God. Um, 
Let's read the word of God together. Yes, uh, let me read. Uh, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever repels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right. But for those who do wrong, do you want to be free from fear um, of one in authority? Then do what is right, and you'll be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it's necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. It, if honor, then honor. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there, are, there may be are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as you yourself. Love does not harm to a, does not harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is already here. It's almost here. So let us put aside uh, the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of your flesh. May God bless his word. Buana Sifiwe. Uh, we've been married for about 43 years. And I'm grateful to God that I'm still her boyfriend. <laughs> That's the most important thing because some people graduate from being girlfriends and they become women. Ever had husband says, you woman? That means the friendship died. <laughs> so when you hear your husband call you a woman, know you need prayer and fasting. Now, I'm grateful to God for the opportunity to share God's word. My prayer and hope is that as we study God's word, that God himself will talk to us. Like I was saying, this, our theme is about the deity. And we want to specifically mention that all of us, not some exceptions, all of us are supposed to radiate God's glory in politics. It's not for some is for all because my topic is the role of the believer in politics. Romans 13 has said that those who are in politics are serving God. Did you hear that? You know, there's no verse in the Bible that says engineers serve the Lord. But there's one that says politicians serve the Lord. Yet the interesting thing is a lot of people think politicians are evil. How can somebody serving God be evil? It's very important to understand that being in politics, the Bible declares, is serving God. Because God hates anarchy. And without politics, we have anarchy. That's why, I, as you remember, a church in my rural area that, um, that, that, that wanted to be in a church without any rules. And as you remember, a teacher telling me, I've joined a church where we have no pastors, no elders. We are all the people of God. So I said, have you built a house? Uh, for worship? No, it's not necessary. We've just met in houses. Obviously, unless somebody organizes you, how will you build a church? So, I tried to explain to him, but of course, the church can't last without leadership. Number one. Number two, it's not scriptural. 
the order of God is there must be leaders. In fact, Paul went everywhere preaching, and then he came around appointing elders. By the way, although that's not my topic today, please note, Paul did not appoint an elder. He appointed elders. That plurality of leadership is a biblical requirement. You should not go to a church where one man is a leader, owner, speaker, preacher, collector of offerings, and the treasurer. <laughs> when you do that, you are not in a Christian touch. You are in somebody's personal property. And these days, they are no longer embarrassed. They normally put a picture of the man and the husband telling you to come. Now, if you go to a church advertising yourself with a husband and a wife, if they throw you out, don't complain. You are the one who went to their property. <laughs> Am I communicating? Whereas in a Christian church, Christ remains the head. And the pastor is only one of the servants serving who? Peter calls him, calls Jesus the chief shepherd. That's really what we are talking about. Remember our topics about leadership and politics. And that will be very important. In the first service, we spent quite a bit of time talking about those things. But we finish where we were uh, simply referring to us is the sort of the earth. And it's very important that uh, you understand what it means to be a sort. We said that every believer must be the sort. And that means he is the preservative. Where you are, you are preserving the people. And that's why we require people in matatu business to preserve matatu work. As the people, because we know a lot of people think about uh, matatu business being difficult. You need the Christians who are there, who will not bribe the police at all. Because when the, when the people bribe policemen on the road, they assume they have no alternative. And you know the police always give you an alternative to jail you or to bribe. Then you take the alternative. There is never a time you have no alternative. It's only you choose to bribe. Now, what I'm saying is we need Christians in those places so that you actually are there. A friend of mine who owns a fleet of, a fleet, a fleet of uh, tankers told me he, when he entered into transport business, he, was a, he had a problem. He was told by everybody, there's no way you can be on the road without bribery. And he said, I'm a Christian, I can't. So he told his drivers, if you ever bribe, it will be your personal money. But he said, you will be arrested, it's okay. He told me he got a lawyer on retainer because he knew he would be in court daily. <laughs> so he told the lawyer to be ready to go to court. So they arrested, court. Arrest again, court. But the head of the mother realized, you know, they don't arrest you because they want you to go to court. They arrest you to feed them. Am I communicating? So they realize they are feeding the government, but they are not feeding. So when things, those, those are branded, whenever they saw that vehicle, ah, they need a retainer. It's a vehicle again. They started being allowed to pass, never being stopped, and it was no longer necessary to go to court. But it pays. It's a kind of effective process, isn't it? That's what we are looking for in politics. People that are going to campaign in a clean way, never giving money, never buying beer for people, and yet they finally get elected. When they elected, higher. You mean he was elected? How could he be elected? People start getting the message. When God wants you to be a leader, you will be, in my understanding, the reason why Jimmy Carter became, who is a born again uh, believer in America, is because just before Jimmy Carter, America went to the Nixon era and the, God, um, the Watergate scandal. Those who are older will remember, isn't it? Americans were so fed up with the politics. They looked for a clean guy. They remember the born again guy. They actually elected him as a Christian. Even as a president, he was still teaching Sunday school. In case you think Sunday school is a junior job. Jimmy Carter was a Sunday school teacher. And he continued as a Christian. Obviously, they later discovered, hi, <laughs> to have a Christian for a president can be tough. So they never gave him a second term. But at least for five years, America experienced what it is to have a Christian president. Just Google up him. And like other presidents who, who left the state house and disappeared, Carter, even one of our elections, was in Kenya, actually being an observer in an election. 
Do you remember? That's Qatar, Jimmy Qatar Foundation, that is all over the world after he was a president. So don't you understand then that even in Kenya, in that constituency where only bribery works, go there as a clean, uh, a clean uh, politicians, you will discover if God wants you to enter to politics, it doesn't matter how much they are, they are bribed. On the day of the election, isn't it secret ballot? Every time you reach there, you take the wrong number. Because basically God is guiding you, not to the guy who gave you money, but the guy who wants elected. When finally you are elected, people wonder, Haya, what happened? Don't worry, God did it. Am I communicating? And people need to understand that. Yesterday I was, I was speaking to the Social Action uh, Fellowship in uh, Sitam Buruburu. And during question time, people in business were telling me, do you realize it's almost in, it's actually impossible to do business as a Christian here? I told him, it is not impossible. It is difficult. The word impossible is not in God's vocabulary. And it's possible. And as you remember, preaching here at All Saints Cathedral, one of the many years, at least I've been speaking in All Saints for the last over 25 years. And I was speaking one of them, and it was what they called a mission month. And people got saved. They came to the altar, and several of us were speaking to them. And uh, the one who was in ahead of me was a lady. And I told her, what do you like to pray for? I want to receive the Lord. But before you pray, tell me. I work at the airport. And uh, in my business, export-import, it will be impossible not to give something. If I get saved, what will happen to my business? You know, for an evangelist like me, I was very tempted to tell him, it's okay, just, just get saved. I realized I'm, I'm being dishonest. I told her, after you get saved, you will never bribe again. As to what happened to the business, only God knows. But if you choose to get saved, it will be the final, the one you bribed yesterday, is the final one you ever bribe. And then you leave the things to God. And I knew I was saying, and this is the thing, so I asked her, do you still want to get saved? She looked at me and said, yes. So we prayed and she gave herself to the Lord. The good thing with a visiting speaker, you just disappear. <laughs> so I, I disappeared. A few years later, I was invited back in All Saints to talk to, to talk to, to talk to the couples fellowship on a Sunday afternoon. And I was walking, I think they were taking refreshments before the meeting. I was walking, then a lady stopped me and said, do you remember me? I said, not quite. Don't you remember the lady who worked at the airport, the been at the airport, you prayed for? Ah, it, you know I prayed for her. I knew it required a miracle. So it was fresh in my mind. I said, are you? Obviously, she was expecting too much. You know, she, um, she is bending, the hair is covering her. How was I to see her face? But <laughs> <laughs> so I actually couldn't remember her. She said, I am that lady. So I was now keen. What happened? I was stopping in order to tell you, my business is still running. The miracle of God has been on my business. I don't bribe, and it still goes on. That's what I'm talking about today. That's what I thought. The place of the believer is to demonstrate to the world that the impossible is possible. Am I communicating? That you can actually be a politician clean, and we need them. Because if you don't end up with the Christian politicians, the politicians will believe it is impossible to be saved. But when you are a Christian, it will help you. You know, basically when you are sought, then you preserve. But it's the same thing as being the light. Look at Matthew chapter 5 verse 14. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. What is he actually saying? You are God's visual aid to show others how God would want them to handle your area of operation. Hence, speak not just in words, but in your excellence professionally. That's really what you're saying, be a light. And that's why we need to encourage people. Just like the fact that you're in church does not make you a Christian. No better than because they are rats. No, no, no. In the world, they are not rats. But in my very church, they are rats in the church, but they never become Christians. Am I communicating? So continue attending church, but never get the impression you are attending very road where Christ is the answer. That is your answer. You have to submit yourself to him for him to be your answer. Similarly, it will be important to understand we come to church as a feeling station so that we can go to do operation out there. And that's why we need people who are Christians in politics 
so that when they come to Valley Road and they are filled, they will go to the political arena and run it in a Christian way. The trouble we have had with a lot of, uh, with a lot of our politicians, and we are here, just forgive me, is that many of them come to church for prayer to become elected. And that's the final time they ever come back. Because after all, you know, they are now honorable. You know, in church, you are just a brother. We have begun a fellowship. We have begun a fellowship where, where you to qualify, you must have been in the university between 17 and 79. We call ourselves the flame from the 70s. People who are in the university Christian Union between 17 and 79. And the other day, um, Calonso, who Calonso came, and you know the, the, the bodyguard, he was, he was vice president, and the bodyguard wanted to enter our fellowship. Then he said, No, 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 here I'm safe. So the bodyguards were kept outside. Inside, he was not your excellency, his brother Steve. <laughs> because you see, I was, 1975, was a CEO chairman. Kalonso was the secretary of the worship committee. There's no, there's no question about your excellency. It's simply brother Steve. And you can challenge one, another. The trouble with a lot of politicians, the day they get elected, that's the final time they're in fellowship. Surely, you know very well, the company you keep, determines your character. So if you choose no longer to be in a fellowship, as you remember challenging another politician, a Christian politician, saying, you know, Brother Nganga, people look down on us after I got elected, even if I go to church, nobody asked me to say something. I said, do you go to church to speak? Are you the pastor? <laughs> so you expect because you are called honorable there, you don't, go. I really thank God for the late president, Kebaki, who will go to church, you never had him speak from church. Am I right? And he was not an irregular attender. He was a regular here in Westlands. So we need to understand that you as a politician, if you want to continue with the Lord, you must continue in fellowship with the same people who know you, who, who can't call you by your excellency. They will call you by your brother, my brother, isn't it? So when you are going off, they will tell you, brother, this is the way to hell, and you are following it. <laughs> because they are not afraid of you. They are your friends, isn't it? So we, that's why we are talking about this topic. To understand a politician and engineer are exactly the same. It's only one in its politics, the other engineering. If an engineering can come and sit and keep quiet, a politician can also come and sit and be quiet. Because you are coming to church to be fed. You are not coming. Surely, how can you? That's not your area. <laughs> Am I communicating? And you think a lot of us pastors and preachers think we are honoring them. We are dishonoring them because we are assisting them to go to hell. When you allow a politician, instead of listening, he is trying to think, what am I going to say? He came to church to get help, but he, since he knows you'll be asked to talk, he is one. And I still remember, I think I was, in, I was preaching in the Peva uh, Church, Gekomba, All Nations. And I sat next to uh, some politicians that had come, and they sat next and were asking, which verse says? Now, in other words, <laughs> <laughs> because by the time they talk, they want to quote a verse. So we are seated together. I need to assist them to know where the verse is. Why is it necessary for a politician to talk if the engineer does not talk? You need to come to where you remain a brother in the Lord. You are brother president. You are brother minister. You are brother justice. You are brother engineer. Brother never goes. Are we together? That's what it means to remain the light. And what has gone on? Because I'm trying to answer the question. How come Christians who are Christians before they enter politics, backslide in politics, is simply the lie of the devil, cheating you that you are somebody different. You are exactly the same, and the devil has remained the same, God has remained the same, he was tempting you earlier, he was tempting you now. If you need brothers to continue, you now still still need brothers. Am I communicating? And it's important to understand. By the way, as I talk about politics, I'm talking about you as an engineer. What kind of fellowship do you have? It is true you go to engineering and you are doing, you are a civil engineer, you are making wonderful roads. But do you have a fellowship? Do you belong to a Bible study group? If you don't, please understand you will keep making new roads on your way to hell. 
It's important to understand the Bible is the one says, that, and, I'm, and I'm quoting the scriptures, in Hebrews chapter, do you know the past that talks about being together? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25. Don't be in the habit of staying in engineering offices all the time. Like some of you are, what should you do? But coming together and starting up, am I communicating? So you need to understand that even if you become a politician, politician is the place of work. You still must belong to a Bible study group where you don't come to preach. You come to listen. Are we together? That's how you, do, that's how you can maintain your light. Even a torch requires renewal of batteries, isn't it? And that's why we come to church. Jeremiah 29 verse 4 is saying, also, seek the peace of, and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Why must we enter into politics? Because if we do not prosper our government, we will be part of the sufferers. When a crook becomes the president, he will not just affect non-Christians, he will also affect Christians. And you know that because when you end up with a parliament without Christians, that's where they have passed laws. The other day they passed a law that made polygamy legal. Do you, you remember? Now you can get a marriage certificate for, without coming to church by simply being allowed. And I was telling sisters who actually come we stay, well, that's not my topic today, but if you allow yourself to come to a come we stay, and you say, no, but you know, I, 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 we even, he paid dowry. Now, if he paid dowry, that's called traditional marriage. And the law in Kenya recognizes it with this provision. You are only wife number one. Because under the traditional law, you can marry as many as, you know, Muslims are only four. If you marry under the traditional law, you can get like a kukudeja, eight of them. <laughs> so you'd have to be a very foolish woman to be here seated and you have not yet registered your marriage. Because now under the new law, it means if you have not registered your marriage, it is assumed to allow your husband to get another, not another wife, other. Am I communicating? Now back here, do you know the law was passed almost quietly? And it changed the structure of marriage in Kenya. Am I right? That's why we need lawyers, we are legal minds who go to parliament and stand the ground. Even if the majority overrule you, you must be hard to be given the position of the scriptures. And that's what you are talking about. That you need to understand your welfare, our welfare as a church, lies in the welfare of the city we belong to. Lies in the, the, and that's why we all need to get involved in all areas of government. We must have Christian judiciary, the, the Christians in the executive, Christian in the legislature, in all that. Ezekiel 3 talks about us as watchmen of the nation. And that's why we need a watchman every corner. If you have watchmen only on the northern side of the church, the thieves will come from the south, isn't it? That's why we are saying you need watchmen everywhere. See, if the Bible calls us watchmen, it will mean we need watchmen in parliament. We need watchmen in the judiciary. We need watchmen in business. We need watchmen in farming. It's because the work of watchmen is to watch for the city. And um, then if you look at Ezekiel 9, verse 4, we read, Go throughout the city of, Jeru of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over the detestable things that are, doing, that, that are done in it. As I listened, he said to the others, Follow him through the city and kill without showing pity or compassion. Slaughter the old men and the young men and women and mothers and children, but do not touch anyone who has the mark begin at my sanctuary. Let me read verse 4 again. Go throughout the city of Jerusalem and put a mark on the forehead of those who grieve and lament over the detestable things that are being done. If you think wrong things are happening in politics, God is saying he wants to mark the people that lament. If you lament, you are touched by the evil happening in politics. You will not do nothing. In fact, that's why it is dangerous to pray. If you pray for people that are hungry, you will soon be the one providing the food. So you have prayed God to provide, isn't it? So you will provide to them through. So if you are lamenting for our politics, most likely you will soon also become a politician. 
The reason why no church, church people are not in politics is because we don't lament about the evils in politics. If we really lamented, the word of God is saying he wants to mark people who lament because they are doing something about it. You cannot be quiet. You will be in one area or the other. And I think that will be very, very important. You know, the other day, the Kenyan church published um, information, and, and I think we, we, there's a, book, a Bible study on it, and I don't, but I don't have the time to go into it. But I want to say clearly, I, am, I happen to be the chairman of an organization called EONET, Ethical Leadership Network. And one of the things we are doing is to tell the Christians to be careful who they elect. And we are saying, if you, the term BVIP, BVIP will remind you the people who qualify to represent God in the judiciary, uh, or rather in parliament. BVIP. B is blameless. You need to look for people that are blameless. And if you have five and they are all blame, blameful, pick for the least blame. I'm not communicating. But you cannot get your hand to accurately go ahead. I still remember when our former um, uh, Bishop Emeritus stood as a senator. I told my wife, I am so happy I have an alternative. Because I would have left it blank. I cannot float my vote to somebody whom I, I can see is not having a little blame. Is even having a lot of it. You need to understand a lot of Christians put their votes on the basis of plurality. I don't vote for the winner. I pledge with my conscience. My friend, you can't be a Christian and vote for the winner. You must vote with your conscience. That means I threw the vote on my candidate knowing he is very unlikely to win except a miracle. And God chose not to do the miracle, so he didn't win. But I was still very happy. We need some of you to actually go into politics and lose because you are giving the Christians opportunity for difference, isn't it? And it's very important that your vote goes there. Because when somebody wins 100% and there's evil, he assumes all of us want evil. He'll do it without any question, isn't it? But if he can see 30% of the people voted against him, he is still very popular, 70%. But he keeps asking, why did that 30% not vote for me? So it's very important to vote for the, for the losing candidate. <laughs> I can see you the way you're looking at me. <laughs> But that's what you're talking about. As Christians, we don't vote for the winning candidate. We vote with our conscience. Am I communicating? By the grace of God, it is also possible that the people voting with their conscience may be the majority, and your candidate will win. So blameless is the first thing, looking at the character of the person. B. E is for empowering. Look for a candidate who doesn't want to do everything for you but has systems that make you be empowered. Do not, for a, do not look for a candidate who is going to give you fish. Look for one that will teach you how to fish. So in your mind, you know God never created us to be dependent. It's actually wrong to be a dependent. In fact, in the book of Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 11 and 12, it's actually saying be, be a, make it your ambition, not to depend on anyone. So it's actually unbiblical to be a dependent. Am I communicating? So if somebody wants to give you free things, do not give him your, your vote. Because the work of a Christian politician is to look for systems that allow people to be empowered. In the end, they don't even thank you. Because you never gave them anything. But you created an atmosphere that allowed them to get. Isn't that what they are saying about Kebaki? They said Kebaki is very mean. In fact, I still remember a taxi during Kebaki era, a taxi taking me from the airport in Mombasa. On the way, he told me, you know, we really, we really uh, miss Moy. I said, why? You know, Moy would pass here and give us things. I said, but Kebaki is creating an economy that allows you to get, to get more, more tourists, therefore more customers. I said, no, 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 no. We also want a hand out. And I told him, that's not the way to go. Now, you need to understand that if you're a Christian, you don't want to become a dependent. You want a politician who is biblical. How does he do it? He does not give you a fish. He gives you ability to, to fish. That's what you mean by empowering in the term B, 
IV. Number the V stands for visionary. Somebody who is not one of the problems you have with politicians is that they are very, very keen to get things done during the first five years. Unfortunately, they use the five years to win the other five. So neither the first five nor the second five work well because they are too busy trying to make themselves popular. But a, mission, a person with a vision is coming in those five years, this is the ground I'll lay. The others can uh, achieve later, but for now, this is what I want to achieve. They achieve it whether they are elected is secondary. Because their work is accurate to go to the people, the people that they are representing, and have a vision for them. So ask, you know, some people, some even some Christians are studying for election. Ask them, what is your vision? They have, oh, my vision is to fight corruption. What is corruption? Now, corruption, who doesn't know corruption? It's obvious. Whenever you hear the word obvious, that means that guy knows nothing. Because if it's so obvious, how come you can't even say three things? But have you seen a lot of people, whenever you ask them a question, they say it is? Obvious means the guy knows nothing. Now, so you need to understand that if you really are going to elect someone, it will be important he is clear what he hopes to achieve. Not that I'll fight for, uh, I'm going to fight uh, 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 corruption. How will you do it? If it has been tried, why didn't it work before? What are you going to do that is? That's vision. Oh, the economy will get better. How? I know. If it's a secret, then I can't elect you. It's Tell me what you will, what you will do. Now, that's what you are talking about. If I see leadership in the Bible, if it is King David, he is clear what he wants to achieve. If it's Solomon, he is clear what he wants to achieve. It's very important that we elect people. That, that's why you can, be, uh, you can be born again and you place yourself on, in my constituency and I still don't vote for you. I will not vote for you because parliament is not a church. Am I communicating? There is a specific, specific function of parliament. If you don't know anything about it, even if you stand ahead of Christians, nothing will change. You do not act, the fact that you are a Christian does not make you a, a competent politician. You require clarity of vision. Are we together? And it will be important if you are going to elect. Remember, my topic is on the place of a Christian, of a believer in politics. And you are the voter. It will be important that that is clear. I in the VIP is inclusive. You need a politician who accepts everyone without trying to change them. Am I communicating? Do you understand the word inclusive? That means he can actually, he is a Christian, but he can allow the Muslims to remain Muslims because he is not the pastor to preach to them. Am I communicating? He is a Christian, but he does not use the church to fight everybody else. Because he is not, in, he is not in, the, in the presidency in order to change everybody. There is a certain reason why he was actually elected. Inclusive means the ability to include everybody, but not to include sin. May I repeat? Inclusive they, means the ability to include everybody without including sin. And when the sin is done by a Christian, unaikemea. And when it's done by a Muslim, you still, you, there's nobody you fear. He may, be, he may be a, a witch doctor, but you tell him, the law says witches got, are going to prison. And the witch you will go to, oh, I will bewitch you, says go right ahead. After all, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. That's really what you are talking about, inclusive. The ability to include people who are not like you. Some people are quiet and you are noisy. You still can be with them. Some people are women and you are a man. You can, you can be with them. Those are the politicians we are looking for. Those are people that will be biblical in their outlook because God created Adam and all of us are called being Adam. Isn't that what we are called? Being Adam means irrespective of your tribe. You are a child of and it will be important that you are like that. And then P stands for protectors of family values. Do not elect somebody who is running around with as many women as possible. Oh, do women also go with the many men? Oh, so it is both ways. Now, the, you need somebody who has family. Why? Because the family is the smallest unit of the nation. And the direction of the family is the direction of the nation. So do not elect somebody who thinks marriage is just a joke. 
he marries, you know, I keep saying it's very interesting. The Western world are polygamous, but very different from Africa. In Africa, we are polygamous, several wives at the same time. The Western world are polygamous, seriously. You know, as you remember, I'm a Gideon, as you remember going for a Gideon conference in Columbus, Ohio, 19, must be 98. And uh, I was talking to a brother, and he was, we were, he was, um, they, were, uh, they were encouraged to entertain us. And so he was telling me, this is my wife, my second wife. And then told me, this is my child, and this is her child, this is our child. This is the first time in the 90s I had something like that. I had not heard about it. I said, what do you mean? You know, I was totally confused. How does somebody introduce a second wife? I thought you heard about it. That's when I realized, second wife means the other one is still alive, but they are not married. So you are accurate polygamous, seriously. <laughs> Am I communicating? You have several wives, but not at the same time. People who have no respect for one marriage until death do us are people you need to avoid to elect. Because family's destruction is a very, very critical thing. Unfortunately, my time is, is gone. But I still want to say a few things. Um, do, am I allowed? <laughs> The, the, I wanted to spend quite a bit of time talking about the importance of worldview and that is the responsibility of the church to have our, to help the, the church and the nation to have a biblical view. What we saw us doing with the Sunday school children is preparing the future politicians. Am I communicating? To come to an adult to change him can be very, very, very difficult and something we need to, we need to talk about. Let me give five levels of involvement in politics that I'm recommending we all get involved in. Number one, in my understanding of the scriptures, all of us must pray for the elections. For you not to be praying for elections may make you a Christianity suspect. Because you have just heard you should be lamenting, isn't it? If you are lamenting, would you want just anybody to become a politician? So you'll be praying about it at least. And that's not for some. All of us must be on our knees praying for this nation so that we elect the right type of MCA, the right person of MP, the right person of senator, the right person who is the governor and president. I don't know who I'm left out. But it's important that we pray. And I'm hoping the reason why the senior pastor has asked us to discuss it in May is so that you have June and July to take serious consideration in your home prayers, in your personal prayers, remember the country. Are we together? It's important, all of us. Number two, level, though level one, all of us must vote. Level two, vote for the right candidate. And again, that's for all of us. You cannot lament for the nation and then stay on home at home during the election day. Because God is giving you through democracy an opportunity to influence the, whether we get the right type of people. Am I right? Then you stay home with us. Are you really lamenting? Oh, but you know, it's so difficult. The queues are so long. Uh-huh. The queues are long. I agree. But are you lamenting? If you try lamenting, would you mind the queue? No. So that's what Jeremiah is saying. He, God wants to mark people who lament for their nation. And they will put a mark on them. When he comes to destroy he will not destroy the ones with a mark. But he will destroy everybody beginning, beginning at the sanctuary. Did you read that? Beginning at the sanctuary. So it's very important that all of us are involved in voting. Because voting is a sign of lamenting. I don't want that kind of person. I told you for me, when I could not get uh, a winning candidate, I still vote. And I told you it is still communicate to the winner that not all of us are happy with, your, with his nonsense. That there are some people who are still unhappy. And if he wants to win us, he must reduce his nonsense. I'm not communicating. So we need to we wake up very early. So that's very important that all of us will spend time in that. Number three, anyone but the pastors must get involved in campaigning for the right candidate. I told, you in the, I told the first service, who wins may be a matter of opinion rather than fact. There's a difference between opinion and fact. And politics is full of opinions. But many people want to give their opinion as if it was a fact. You know, I'm, like I told you, I'm a Gideon, and I've, really, I've been a Gideon for around 40 years, and I like when the Americans are visiting us. If they are from Republican, 
they try to show us that the people who are Republicans are the people who are biblical. Um, until I almost think, then who, why should anybody be a Democrat? The next time the visitor is from Democrats, and he shows us how Democrats are the only people who do what the Lord says in, in the book of Matthew chapter 25. And they create the impression that Republicans cannot be Christians. So I came to a conclusion. It's more of an opinion. And it's okay to differ on. Once you know what you are saying, it's an opinion. Like when somebody says, my wife is very beautiful. That's an opinion. <laughs> so allow him to continue with his. Don't start saying, no, 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 no. He has a right to his. After all, beauty is the eye of the beholder. And politics must be the same. We must allow ourselves to understand the differences in opinion, like I told the first service, are differences of opinion. That means you and me can elect different candidates, and both of us will share the same heaven. Because we are not differing on facts. We are differing on opinions. When you understand that, and you understand the other thing I said in the first service, that whoever wins, God still remains on the throne. It doesn't matter who wins. God will still be on there. What does that mean? That if your candidate loses, you don't commit suicide. Because you know, you prayed, God, let my candidate win, yet not my will. So when your candidate loses, you are not happy. We say natural, you are not happy. But you are not mad at other people. The reason why we fight each other is because of the assumption that an opinion has become a fact. Your candidate, according to you, is better. But according to other people, the other candidate is also better. And that's why we do not think it's wise for any pastor to ever tell us openly which party he is supporting, which candidate he is supporting. Why? It's a matter of, you know, the morning after the elections, there will be many people turning up here in church for counseling because they feel traumatized by the loss of their candidate. Who are they coming to? To a pastor. And they know that pastor was supporting the winner. They just appear and the pastor shows up and says, okay, my problem over. Because I keep telling the pastor, the moment you declare your political stand, you resign as a pastor. Even if you don't give the bishop your letter, you have actually resigned. Nobody will come to you unless those who are from your political party. Am I right? It is suicidal for a, pa politic for a pastor to tell the congregation which candidate they are supporting. I'm not communicating. The way you can do it is the way I have done it. You can talk about who a good candidate looks like. But it's, it is each individual to choose who fits the bill. I'm not communicating. And it's important to understand that. You know, I was telling them in the first service how, after one of the elections here in Valley Road, there was such, such traumatizing after the loss that a prayer meeting was called. When the prayer meeting was called, the people came because we are, the country was suffering. So we are all praying. In the middle of the prayer, one of the pastors, one of our pastors, many years ago, so they are no longer in the payroll. One, one of the pastors, so do not look around. They are not here. <laughs> one of the pastors asked in the prayer meeting, you, you and you and you, what are you doing in the prayer meeting? To laugh at us. You know, they did not know that only people from one party were supposed to pray. The ones who seemed to support the other side were not supposed to come for all. But because it was announced at a prayer meeting, see, we all turned up. Now, why do you think a pastor would say that? Because she is mistaking an opinion for fact. She thinks the wrong person won. But surely, if you prayed and the wrong person won, your problem is not with the opposition. It's with the God. And that kind of God, the earlier you stop worshiping him, why would you worship a God like that? <laughs> Who can be defeated? I'm not communicating. If the Lord allows somebody else to win, you still worship him. Are we together? Now, I don't have enough time to deal with it. But you can see a lot of the things happening is wrong assumptions and wrong teachings. So we need to, on number three, be willing to campaign for our candidate, but understanding that if the person you are campaigning with does not accept you, he is still your friend. Because it was an opinion and everybody is entitled to their 
opinion. So I can campaign for my candidate, and then you say, but the way that's nonsense. I agree. It's nonsense to you, but precious thing to me. It's okay. Go, go and vote for your candidate. That's what will bring peace in our nation. When you start understanding that one party is not that I, if I'm an ODM guy, I know very well I would like ODM to win. But I know God has a final. So when ODM is defeated, what did I say to the Lord? What did I say to the Lord? Praise the Lord. Am I communicating? It's very important to understand that unless the church is taught these things, people start imagining the world. But it's important to understand there is absolutely nothing wrong with telling others about your candidate. So do not think I'm backsliding when I tell you how, what I like about ODM. I'm not backsliding. I'm giving you my personal and I have a right to my and I'm selling my opinion. If you take it, okay. If you don't, we still remain friends. Level number four. We should also think of financing our candidate. If you really believe in your candidate, part of your money should go to financing the candidate. Am I communicating? Yeah, because it will be a pity for you to say you are lamenting, according to Jeremiah, yet not a single shilling is going to your candidate. Am I communicating? It is not evil to accurately give money to support a clean candidate so that the clean candidate can, can win. And it will be important that you understand that. However, I'm not saying everybody will. It is those who, are, who can, anyone who can. But of course, the highest level of involvement in, in politics is to be a candidate yourself. I'm a little late on this one, on, on encouraging, but we need candidates. Not now, because I think the time is closed, but we need candidates, not just in parliament. When you see an opportunity in judiciary and you qualify, apply. When you see opportunity in the executive to become a CS, to become a DO, to become whatever, apply. Why? Because you want the, you to be the salt and the light in those corners. Are we together? What about the PTA? My wife used to be the, the, the PTA chair of where our daughter went to high school. It's important because those PTAs are the ones influencing the values being taught in schools. But a lot of Christians, in fact, I was told a very sorry story about uh, one of the Christian schools here one of the older Wazungu schools, which was there for Anglican. And the person was telling me this week, when I went to visit him, how he was a deputy headmaster in that school. And then the Muslims were organizing how to take over a, school, a Christian school. And they talked about who will vote, who will suggest the Acha. So he told the Christians, now you know, you, unless you organize, the PTA is being taken over by the Muslims. He went to the first one, he said, I'm too busy. Second one, I'm too busy. Third one, I'm too busy. Fourth one, he is, they are too busy. The Muslims, when the elections came, or oh, the committee became Muslim, the, the new chair stood up and said, thank you for the election. From today, anybody will be coming as a Christian and go out as a Muslim. He did not even wait to tell them later. Those Christians were still there hearing the announcement. The teacher told me that he was... He could see it coming, it had come. So since he was the one who was the MC, he stood up and said, our, Christi our school has Christian tradition and we always sing a hymn and uh, we also ask the chaplain to pray. And that's the same way we'll finish this PTA meeting. By that time, the new chairman feels, how can he do that? So, but they sang a hymn. <laughs> what could they do about it? Sang a full hymn. Then the chaplain prayed. When the meeting was over, he told me, the, the, the new chair and several because the people in the committee were actually in the cabinet. They were senior people because it's a famous school. So it gets very, very senior people came to him and said, MC, you did a good job of MC, but you have just signed your transfer form. What would he say? So he said, sure enough, that was a Friday, the following Tuesday, he got a transfer. Exactly as predicted, because the person talking was in the cabinet. And that's how he left the school. Why? Christians avoiding participating in politics. Not of parliament, but of your school. Am I communicating? The same thing is happening in your security meetings. Am I right? You, you only pay money. 
you pay money. And then they throw parties with the, where they are taking alcohol and teaching your children how to drink. And so, oh, huh, these are so bad in our estate. But you had an opportunity to become the new chair of the security meeting. But you kept off. Are you really lamenting? If you are lamenting, ask the Lord to use you to bring a change. Am I communicating? And I don't know who I'm talking to. But I believe every one of us has to get involved for the sake of our society in whichever way we look at it. I finish with Romans chapter 13 verse 4. Where the Bible has told us clearly, those involved in politics are servants of God. The politician is God's servant. Hence, Christian politicians, even more, are needed. Only enter into politics, however, if you have the call of God. I'm not asking anybody to just stand up and go into politics. Go into politics because you have heard the voice of the, God, of the Lord. And when you finally get voted, do not have the voters be seen as your master. God really, really remains your pastor. And don't go there worrying about the election. You have five years to do something. Do something with the five years. If the Lord chooses for you to be elected, that is in his hands. After all, he's the one who allowed you to be elected the first time. May you go into whatever you go to, not to last there for long, but to do something that brings a difference. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, these are easy things to say, difficult to practice. Is there somebody saying, Brother Nganga, as you pray, remember me in prayer. I feel I have not gotten involved the way I should have been. I have not been Christ representative in my community, in my clan. I just keep quiet and let the thing, uh, sleeping dogs lie. But I hear the voice of God. Pray for me that I will change and God will help me. Would you like to put up your hand so that I know there is somebody specific I'm praying for? You have heard the voice of God. Yeah, the Lord bless you. Anybody else? The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Upstairs, put your hand up. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Anybody else? Yeah, the Lord bless you. The Lord bless you at the back. The Lord bless you. Let's ask the bishop to just pray for us. As we put up our hands, he will pray for us that the Lord would truly make a difference in politics, whether at the national level or community level or school level, that we volunteer ourselves as God calls us. Thank you. Let's pray together. Our Father, we want to honor you and praise you for the calling that you have placed upon our lives in various sections of the society and the community. We thank you for the offices where we are working. We thank you for the neighborhoods where we live, the institutions that we are leading. We thank you for the open space in the public arena for engagement and involvement. And thank you for these individuals whose hands have been raised up because they do feel something needs to change in the place where they are at. We ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you'd come through for each and every one of them. In Jesus' name, we pray that uh, you'd give them uh, the impetus, the encouragement, the strength, uh, the ability that they need, that in case they have, not done, they have done some things that are not right, uh, forgive our Father and uh, give them the ability to turn over their lives. We pray that they would not go in their own power nor in their own might, but they would have a deep sense of Christ's presence with them as they submit and surrender their lives to him, that you would lead them, you would guide them, and you would take over control over their lives. And so we commend them into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray that they would start a journey with you, walk with you, and see you faithfully leading them in their journey of leadership as they bring the transformation that they need to bring. Be glorified and honored. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's appreciate Elder John. Oh, amen. Amen. And thank you, Bishop, for that prayer as well. As we bring this service to a close, it's, uh, John is also an author. He's written so many books, so I have lost the count. Um, but they are all excellent books. 
So, as he said, is this Scripture Union? Yes, yeah, Scripture Union, there you will get his books. I think he has 20 books now. 20 books. Started writing a long time ago. Please get hold of them, and I'm sure you will be blessed. Amen? Amen. Amen. I think we all continue to lament. That's what we have been told from the book of Ezekiel, Sister Ezekiel Jeremiah, is that we lament. Please lament for your county. Lament for your ward. Who sort of us have a ward, isn't it? No, and in, uh, of course, Nairobi, we also have, we have two governors. Now your governor at home and governor here. L let's lament for them that God will give us the right people. Amen? And as we lament also, let's prepare to vote that day. Amen? I met someone who said, me, I'm not going to vote. It will not make a difference. I told, the, I told her, I will tell your husband to drive you by force to go and drive. I mean, let's, let's, let's prepare to go and vote because it's God who will choose the leader. Amen. Amen. And the campaign for your person. Don't be quiet. Campaign for, except the pastors. Campaign for your person. Let's be practical. And, expect, and, and the letters expect that God is going to work a miracle this time round to the glory of his name. Amen. May we say the grace together. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. The first time visitors, please we can go through that door where there is that lady and uh, we will get a cup of tea. In case you are here, you need to get saved or you need any kind of prayer. Our counselors are here and our pastors will be able to pray for you. The Lord bless you and have a victorious week in the presence of God. I've got my mind made up. And I won't turn back Cause I want to see my Jesus someday I've got my mind made up And I won't turn back Cause I want to see my Jesus someday I've got my mind I've got my mind made up yeah. And I won't turn back Cause I want Jesus, someday yeah, yeah. I've, I've got, got my, my mind made up yeah. and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind, I've got, got my mind made up, got my and mind I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus. Yes, and I want 
the rock. The rock is higher than I. Sing! Jehovah hides me. I am under the rock. Go tell. Go tell my enemies. I am under the rock. Yeah, yeah. Jehovah hides me. I am under the rock. I am under. I am under the rock. Oh, 